I want to make a joke about itty bitty living space. You know, because it's tiny. <laughs> Atelier Cologne, Whoa. and my best get at pronouncing the name is Trefer Pure. So it's a it's an EDC Eau de Cologne, uh, and you know I'm all right with that because that's kind of what this that's what this game is supposed to represent. Mm -hmm. I love the color. So yeah, it's kind of it, it's very indicative of the. Orange divert, uh, or however you say that, from uh, the Hermes line, mm -hmm. which is kind of what the bitter orange in here starts to take after is uh, Papa Hermes's big, or dirty orange. Um, dirty, dirty orange. But quickly it turns into the sharp Neroli uh, in many, uh, many an Italian cologne. Italian. May as well. I mean, I like, the, I like the rounded. I like if you watch the videos. I like rounded edges. I think they look fancy. And I mean, I like the font that they use for the name on it. I think it's pretty. A really tight sprayer. That is nice. It's kind of a weaky, flimsy sprayer, but let's check this guy out. Ooh. Oh yeah! Nice little spray on there. So yeah, I mean, overall, the bottle for being cute and travel size and airport proof, I think it's it's pretty cute. I like it. Nothing fancy, nothing stupid. But as far as like a summer cologne goes, so um, this, if you got this guy and Aqua de Parma Colonia Essenza, um, you'd have the one half herbal and then the other half sharp and citrusy, uh, like ready to go for summer really, as far as like very generic baseline fragrances are concerned. So when we got this, it was still like fall wintery time, right? I mean, we haven't had this for that long. Mm -mm. So I'm excited with spring summer coming along because uh, it will really give us a chance to experience this in the weather it's supposed to be. Um, so <laughs> where we're at, we've been getting all sorts of all four seasons in one like in one week type feeling going on. So. I'm noticing now how much the weather plays a role in what I perceive fragrance to smell like. So I'll be, I mean, I think this smells great now. I do. It really does remind me of warm weather is coming and the sun is shining around the bend. But I'll be, it'll be really nice to actually wear this during summer and spring when it's warmer out. Yeah, and it's got a lot more complexity immediate to it rather than just the bitter orange of uh, its Hermes counterpart. And, uh, I mean, there's some herbal qualities in here, too. There's, um, basil and clover in here, too, I believe. Well, clover's not really a, an herb, but, um... It's a spice. A spicy flower. The spice of life. So, I mean, as far as, uh, Atelier, Atelier Cologne goes, we've smelled a lot of their, their line, and I mm -hmm. think... Most of it is pretty boring. Most of it's pretty much just like, eh. here's some here's some something to wear during the summer, a cologne that'll just really not stand out. And I suppose in a way that's kind of what's going on here too, but in a way that I love Corone pour un homme, um, because because of that very quality that it takes a very classic uh, element of what springtime. Uh, for men can often be um, and just kind of does that in a very pure and unadulterated way and I think that's exactly what's going on here is that it takes elements of a lot of different uh, traditional approaches to spring you've got your orange you got your neroli and and summer that is um, and then you've got your herbal notes and it just kind of shoves them all into one cologne version which for summer is very nice and it's just uh, really, I mean, very, very overlooked as far as uh, the complexity of, of the fragrance. I, I think in a lot of ways, this is a classic without being a classic. Mm -hmm. It's just very good if you're starting out. I think this would be a really great starting out summer fragrance for you to run towards. Um, if you've been in the game for a while, I still think it would be... The things that you love so much about summer fragrances, this has got it. 
Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people are really scared to to smell uh, or buy citrus fragrances. If you're in the community, they're often looked down upon and looked at like. Because I mean, for me, I avoid citrus because I don't want to smell like cleaning supplies. I mean, that's that's what I think of anyway. Then a lot of people just say they're kind of like cheap. Like, oh, here goes Chanel just pushing another citrus summer fragrance. Wow, neat. Dolce & Gabbana. Thanks, guys. Like, that's kind of what it's looked at in the community. And I think, uh, I think for the most part, they're probably, you know, somewhat correct in doing so. But I think just just the same, you know, the niche community has their goofy-ass genres that they, that they go to all the time. Like, oh boy, another fucking oud fragrance. Thank God. Here we fucking go again. Hey. Don't knock on oud. But I'm bum. But, um, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, everybody has their generic shortcomings, depending on, like, what price range you're looking at and what market they're marketing mm -hmm. towards. Everybody has something that they're just horny as hell for as consumers. And, uh, I think, you know, in the areas that we've, we've gone to, like, the Sephora's haven't carried this one. Um, I mean, they carry the brand, but I don't think we've smelled this one at yeah. any of the Sephora's that we've been to. Yeah. It's just really flying under the radar. And I think I think it's kind of unfortunate because I think like we've been saying here, this is a very beautiful, well-rounded take on a classic uh, concept of mm -hmm. uh, a genre of perfume, if you want to call it that. So what would you rate it out of 10? You know, I'd probably I'd probably swing it like an eight, seven, five, maybe a nine. I think this is incredibly strong. Uh, as far as like looking for a sharp neroli fragrance, but then also finding all these other beautiful things hidden in here, the herbal qualities and the orange just really make this a, a really well rounded uh, cologne, like real cologne mm -hmm. going on here. And as far as like I mean, like I've been saying, as far as the genre of like. Italian summer colognes go god damn. Yeah, I'll take that any day How about you? See, I'm gonna go a bit lower on this. I'm gonna do like a 7-3 um, I prefer my fragrances to be weird as fuck and I mean, I think it's great. I am excited to smell it and wear it and all that other good jazz, but uh, just eh, I give it a solid 7 somewhere in there and Who would wear this? Magnum P.I. <laughs> yes. Rolling around. <laughs> yes. Um, who is it? Fresh. Tom Selleck. <laughs> I did it. Tom Selleck in a Selico. <laughs> I did. Magnum P.I. He lives in Hawaii. He smokes cigars. He lives in this luxurious mansion. Whatever. That's fair. I vote Magnum P.I. I mm. like that answer a hell of a lot better than David Hasselhoff. So I'm going with Guido Anselmi from uh, Eight and a Half. The Fellini film, mostly because it's dealing with a director who's like struggling with Rogers Block, so he spends a whole lot of time just fucking around, like in the Italian summer side. And like the movie starts, he's like getting back from a spa, trying to like quench his anxieties, like a luxurious spa. And like, bam! That's what he's smelling like. He's smelling like some sweet herbs, bitter orange, and uh, fucking neroli. Sunshine. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, like he's. Spraying it on with his sun with his sunglasses on throughout the whole fucking film, trying to convince everyone Bam. else that he's fine, but containing his fucking nightmares on the inside, blocking himself off from the outside. There it is, guys. Look at this. Oh man. Oh, we just discovered something. It's a magic there. trick. Ta-da! Splash bottle. It becomes a splash bottle. Ta-da! Which I think is also very fitting of a classic Italian EDC dude, is that you could just splash that shit on. I could just unscrew this, yeah, and the whole, I just drench myself and be like, ready for summer. I'm blue, abba dee da ba die abba dee da ba die abba dee da ba die See, it's blue, you get it? No. Oh.